Well, I suppose I ought to I ought to become you for the next 50 seconds. Now I am Ron Paul. I am uh, Ron Paul. I am biking. It's 110 degrees. Happily biking. Biking along. Long, long, uh, happily biking. Ron Paul. This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. Dr. Paul. As in, uh, a doctor no, Dr. Paul. <laughs> I, I presume it is not daily you are addressed by a head of state, uh, but perhaps you have, uh, on uh, wider occasions, encountered missives uh, from bloviators of a type well known uh, on the net, who are accoutremented uh, to look like one. Were you to assume that I have endeavored these vestments exclusively for the purpose of acquiring uh, your notice, I hope I might be forgiven for allowing that assumption uh, to go uh, uncorrected. This presentation is surely the minimum that could be hoped to even briefly command your attention, uh, knowing as we do the many duties and considerations which already struggle against one another for it. But. Command your attention, it must. <clears throat> For this is, uh, this orator uh, oratory contains within it a design which would all but assure the continuance and flourishing of human liberty for the remainder of the discernible future. This promising scheme is not my own. It is, um, it is your own. Uh, um, uh, and it is, uh, it has not come to attainment only because, uh, you have, uh, not yet attempted to attain it. <clears throat> mm. Uh, early in the year of our Saviour, 2007, before the words Ron Paul were meaningful to perhaps more than ten millions, you delivered a speech to me and roughly three hundreds of our fellow travelers in the New Hampshire Liberty Movement. In it, you mulled the prospect of your first presidential run, not yet begun, and then made the following almost forgotten, but perhaps even more uh, promising, uh, reference. If you said, and, uh, uh, well, I suppose I ought to, I ought to become you for the next fifty seconds. Uh, one moment. <coughs> carry on. Uh, carry on. Uh, do not exodus. Uh, uh, now, now I can, uh, <laughs> now I am Ron Paul. I am uh, Ron Paul. I am biking. It's 110 degrees. Happily biking. Biking along. Long, long, uh, happily biking. Ron Paul. Yes, there he was. I was Ron Paul. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I need, I need to continue being Ron Paul for another fifty seconds, perhaps. Uh, you, if you said, uh, and well, um, if you said, uh, if I, Ron Paul, were to suffer ignominious defeat, or perhaps uh, even before the primaries, uh, in or perhaps even before the primaries, then I should, I should perhaps consider a relocation to the promising green hills of New Hampshire, and there perhaps undertake a drive for statewide office. <clears throat> Ah. Very, very tiring. Very, very tiring being Ron Paul. Ah. Mm. Um. Ah. Stay with office. Now, um, I hope I may be forgiven for paraphrasing from memory. A recording of the speech is regrettably not availing itself. But there it was, the great secret of the world in 2007. A simple relocation to New Hampshire by a Congressman Paul. But hardly anyone saw it. And those that did, I among them, uh, labored in vain, perhaps not hardily enough, uh, to draw attention to it. Uh, nevertheless, your proposal, despite now tottering on the edge of historical oblivion, remains brilliant in its simplicity and will, if undertaken, surely have an electrical effect. Uh, this, we may calculate, would first take the form of an oxygenating publicity, 
uh, then for you a moderate, mo mo moderate, <laughs> but uh, uh, but notable increase in your own uh, freedom and safety. In fact, if you are, as I believe you are, uh, anything like the the two odd thousands of us who uh, who preceded you here, uh, then, then this is uh, certainly to be the case. New and promising latitude of successful civic action would follow should you choose uh, to inflict it. There, there would be uh, imaginative pledges and immigrations which uh, otherwise would not. A general flowering of activity which otherwise would not. And if it was your slightly afforded desire, you would in all probability see laws repeal, enforcers reconsider, elections triumph, and all those shining completions, albeit on a smaller scale, that you are so consistently denied while within the federal sarcophagus. Uh, why, a, uh, a, uh, a moth that could almost wag its wings and effect alteration here in the free state. I should know. I am one, and have so done. Uh, but you are an eagle. Uh, one moment. Remain affixed. Uh, do not, uh, uh, do not evacuate. Uh, Winston will be back. Winston contemplates a rapid return, almost immediate in character. His apparatus is still functioning. That is good. I like it when apparatuses continue to function. Uh, Twenty minutes in time. Speaking, as I have learned, and you much have, must have already known, uh, can be a, a draining and difficult experience. Mm, it's uh, well, very well, almost prepared, almost prepared for return. Hey, Winston is back. Winston is back. Um. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, the electrical effect. Ah. Uh, and you were telling me that it's really not. General laddering will not. A moth could almost fight. Yes, ah, uh, I'm a moth. You are an eagle. Ah, uh, all, all in this pro uh, the prodigious region is crowned by the empowering specter of limiting, although not ravishing, Wait, no. <laughs> it's the empowering specter of limited, uh, though ravishing, as you can see, geography, plus accessible civics and achievable aims. These latter, if implemented even by half, would construct an unassailable freedom beacon and uh, provoke a further constructive action. Regionally, it would surely compel into the public memory of your own historical mission. But uh, when, we, when we peer backward uh, through the veil of decades at the, the Douglases and the Mondales, uh, the Harts and the Stevenses, we scarcely even see them, uh, though these we perhaps see uh, least badly of the lot and some have not even yet uh, passed beyond the rim. A presidential campaign, even one as uh, auspicious as yours, uh, does not uh, indicate a notable space in history or a memorable effect upon future policy. To leave your imprint here and in our books of statute would leave it more greatly upon posterity on so many regrettable occasions, we freedom folk have, uh, have heard it asked, and could not well respond. Uh, where have a Congressman Paul's uh, voluntarist schemes shown themselves to be uh, uh, fruitful? Uh, where have they, they even been undertaken in whole? Uh, there must be a place to which we may point and say, uh, uh, here, 
Uh, here it has been done. Uh, and here, uh, been proven. Uh, we, would, uh, we would have proven it a dozen years uh, previously, but just happened to do it this month. Because uh, Dr. Paul spent a few thousands of dollars on Lipinski, found himself suddenly a score of times more potent, and put us over the top. Let this be what happens. If Mrs. Paul is up to the strain, now, and not a dozen years hence, let it unfold now, or at least its contemplation, a migratory example to stir the globe with a sight not once seen before, and never hence to be surpassed. We need you, Dr. Paul. Uh, the remainder of the world's freedom of faction needs you. And it needs you here in New Hampshire. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM, Feds don't want you to hear them.